he gives it to you too early, I've come to the conclusion, which I used to have it, I'd start on Tuesday getting it for next Sunday. It becomes well, But a, you study all the time. Yeah. But I, and he, I he, every time he decides, well, this is what I'm going to do on Sunday, <laughs> well, then it gets changed Sunday morning. Oh, it has changed. So it doesn't do any good to figure it out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't do any good to try to figure it out during no. the week. No, but uh, it's not like you don't study because you no. study every day. Well, here's, here's what triggered this. I opened my Bible to Acts, and it just opened here. The third chapter... Uh, yeah, I'm going to need that this morning. Ready. And this is the darkest part of the room right here where we yes. are. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Verse 21. This is talking, and this is Peter's message talking about Jesus after he had been resurrected into heaven and now the Holy Spirit had come and he was giving the really first great message that had been preached. Uh, before, up until that point, after Jesus had come back into heaven and the Holy Spirit had come. He says, He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything. Now let's stop there. He must remain in heaven until the time comes. You know, I don't care what we do, God has a calendar and a time. I've always wondered about that, but I'm being more and more convinced as we've talked here on Sunday morning that God has a time that He does everything. It's in a, an appointed time, and He doesn't do anything until that appointed time has come. And so here we're reading that Peter is saying He must remain in heaven. Now that word was a strange word to me, heaven. So I did a, not, it really shouldn't be strange, but it was. And I did a study on that word. Let's see if I've got it on this page. You want to put the light back on me here? Okay, I believe it's on this page right here. Okay. All right. Uh, the word heaven is a strange word. And it means a residence, the act, or a place. So we're seeing that heaven is not just a place beyond the, the, the black hole. Right. And it isn't just beyond the stars. It is, a, it is an act. And I'm going to show you some things in a few minutes that will, if you can really pick it up, that you will really uh, see this and be blessed by. It's a staying place, a residence, or an act, a place. Okay. Now, going back to the scripture we were looking at. And it says, he must remain in that place until the time comes for God to restore everything. Now we keep talking about when Jesus comes back, but the reality of this is when God brings him back. God is the one who will restore everything. You know, because we have the New Testament, we put everything on Jesus. And Jesus is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Savior. He's all of that. But in the act of the things of the world and its operation, God is still totally in charge. And He will bring the world into the order that He wants. And He will, re and Jesus will remain. And the word act is not even a good word here. He will remain tied or bound where he ever he is unseen by the human eye except on whatever rare occasions until God has got everything ready to go. You see it's the same thing when Jesus came the first time. It was God who prepared everything. He prepared it for his son. He's still preparing it for his sons now that is us sons i was with a pastor this week and uh uh was a actually powerful man in fact when i'm thinking up he's probably one of the most accurate prophets that it lives today uh i mean he he is right on and he is, has the reputation now of being a a major prophet 
and we were we were talking, generally talking, and, and he said, Well, I'm God, one of God's sons. No, I'm no, one of God's servants. servants. I'm one of God's yeah, servants. I'm one of God's servants. I stopped him, I said, Now, brother, do you realize what you just said? Yes, oh I'm I'm one of his servants. I says, you know, Jesus said, You've seen the Father, you've seen me, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I said, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Because servants do not know what their master is going to do or doing. Right. We will bring you in and you will know what we're doing. You are not a servant. Not a son. I told him, I said, we are sons of God, mm -hmm. friends of God. We are servants of the people. Or to the people. And to the people and all the people. We're their servants. Kind of took him back a little bit and probably didn't disagree with it, but he never thought of it. But that is what ministry is really about, is and that's why the ministers serving confused. the people. It's not the other way around, and that's the way it is in most buildings. Yeah, that's why Eric went somewhere today that uh, he felt that this pastor was, Chinese pastor was, kind of getting beyond himself and he just wanted to watch him. I told him, I said, don't, don't say anything. <laughs> just watch him. We'll talk about it. I, I'm, he said, I'm his mentor, so I have to be very careful to make sure I tell him what I feel like ought to be right. said. And this time it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just watch. Anything. <laughs> don't be a divider. Don't, don't divide anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we are sons of God and friends with God not his servant and that is not what he wants us to be all right let's get the light back baby please okay he must remain where he is in heaven is an act uh, more than anything else it's a it's a hiding place until the time comes for god to restore everything for god to restore everything as he promised long ago through the holy prophets. Now, we are seeing so many things happen today that are so unusual, but they are occurring daily, every day. I, I mean, I remember back a few years ago, you didn't have much going on, but we've got it going on all the time. In fact, there's so much going on that they don't even report much of it anymore. It just happened when it would have been huge news a, a few years ago. All right, let's continue. I've got a couple of scriptures here I want to share with you and I want you to think about. Let's go to John, the 14th chapter, verse 2 through 4. All of us know this real well. John 14, verse 2. In my Father's house, are many mansions. Now, I won't talk about that word right now, but I will in a few minutes, so mark it down in your mind. We're talking about the mansions in the Father's house. Okay, in His place. Now, there's a lot of songs that uh, this is taken very literally. Mm -hmm. Like, God, build me a cabin, don't, don't in the corner of glory <laughs> land. Uh, and then there's I've a, got a mansion just over the hill top. Okay, so there's a whole lot of lot of misconceptions here, but remember that word, the mansions, in the Father's house. Jesus said, "If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself." That where I am, there you may be also, and where I go you know, and the way you know. Now, that was a strange statement. One of his disciples followed that up and said, Lord, how do we know where you're going? <laughs> he said, you know, if we are in total contact with God, we know what is about to happen. He says, and where I go, you know. You already know where I'm going, and you know the way to get there. All right, that's good, but let's go to another one now. Stay in John, the 14th chapter. 
Hey, go down to verse 23 and 24, and it's going to get kind of heavy here. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. That's awesome. <laughs> now when you really let that sink in, that's more than just a verse to memorize. Mm -hmm. I mean, this changes everything. Where's God? Where's his home? Where are his mansions? Inside of us. He says, you already know where I am. But they didn't. They didn't. Con they didn't pre conceive, perceive what he was saying. And you know how to get there. It's inside of us. That makes me think of another song. You'll never be lonely again. Never again. Never again. <laughs> we will come to him, and we will come to him, and make our home with him. Home, I looked that word up, and it means the residence. He, the mansions, obviously, is inside of us. And the stronger we are in Him, the greater the mansion is. You know, we have this, this perception of heaven, and there is a heaven. John saw it coming down out of heaven to this earth. But it was not necessarily heaven. It was a Jerusalem. A new Jerusalem. And it had, I mean, it's massive in size. And it has layers. It has floors. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where the believers will be. And it, it's, it's quite unusual. But we try to make, and it will have the streets of gold. It will have nothing but, but the very finest and the wealth of all wealth will be in that. And so this, this verse, as I read this, as it came to me even this morning, I saw this as I'm seeing it now. If we really realize what we're reading here and if there's any reality to it, any truth, most of the things, many of the things we say and many of the things we do, we would not say and do. To believe and know that the residence of God is inside of us, and we are a walking God. We are a walking mansion. As you have to read it for yourself, is, is, this, is this going to be a throwaway verse that doesn't really mean what it says? If it is, then we've got to throw away a whole lot of stuff, like, mm -hmm. you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay? My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. All right, going back up here for a moment. My father, in my father's house are many mansions. Where's his house? In us. <laughs> and mansions. We are that mansion. We are that dwelling place where God lives. You know, how do we, how can we, how can we do the things we do and say the things we say if we really believe that we are, that we are in God and God is in us? Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.